Packers and Vikings. A power struggle atop the NFC mm. North and an emphatic statement Gold Nation. here on Sunday in the land of Skull as everything is purple. And Kirk Cousins, the beneficiary of that Kevin O'Connell offense, making things look easy and getting it to his top target. Justin Jefferson, nine grabs, a buck 84, had a buck 50 at the break, two receiving touchdowns as this vaunted Green Bay defense couldn't get home either, BMAC. So we take a look at this box score with Minnesota making a big statement here in week one against their divisional foe. Ryan Wilson, Bryant McFadden breaking this one down at the top of the NFC North, and it's clear who sits atop it, not just in the standings, but maybe the mental edge that was created here in week one, BMAC. It's the Vikings making the statement, and I know you've got your ear to the ground across the league, but you got a special ear to the ground in that Vikings defensive room. We'll talk about what they did offensively, but I know you were blown away by their defensive effort here on Sunday. Oh, no question. Number one, I love seeing the guys from the Vikings defense fly around, mm -hmm. sideline to seatbelt, uh, sideline to sideline, no seatbelt at all. Mm -hmm. And number two, I love how they were able just to harass Aaron Rodgers. I know they sacked him four times, but if you look at Aaron Rodgers' jersey, they played indoors. <laughs> but his jersey looked like he played outdoors, like he was literally <laughs> playing in grass. It was dingy. It was ruffled up. If you didn't know any better, you thought Aaron Rodgers was playing in dirt. That's how much they put him on the ground there in Minnesota. That's a thing of beauty because Aaron Rodgers has dominated. He's bullied this division. Mm -hmm. Joe, you know it. You're a Chicago Bears <laughs> fan. You've been bullied by Aaron Rodgers your entire adulthood life. Wanna I'm know. sorry, Wanna but know. that's the case. But today, he didn't bully anybody. They came with a plan. They saw they conquered, and this was a huge day. I can Ryan can take over and talk about how good Justin Jefferson is, but I got to highlight the defense. Skull Nation stand up. They were there in drums today, and, they, and their players fed off, that, off the atmosphere, and today they just dominated one of the baddest man's Baddest man in the NFL, Aaron Rodgers. Ryan, before we go that direction and talk about that premier pass catcher, I want to talk a little bit more about Rodgers here and maybe the frustration factor that he's going to be facing throughout this season. It reared its head a little bit in camp, Ryan, and you can take that wry smile somewhere else because it is a conversation that we do need to have here about 12 and some of the issues he might have this year without his top target in tow. Uh, the rice smile is because I know exactly what you're thinking as a Bears fan, and I was just thinking it as a casual fan. <laughs> Look, I said it last year. I said it the year before. There are times during the football season where Aaron Rodgers looks disinterested. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's anything outrageous. I don't think that's a hot take. You can see him do it. We saw him do it last year, that Buccaneers game by halftime. He had checked out mentally. He was done. This game was a little different. He obviously was trying to win the football game. The offensive line struggle didn't have either offensive tackle. The, the young wide receivers is going to be a thorn in his side for the entirety of this season. We saw the frustration, uh, and that had a lot to do with it. We saw him on the sideline uh, being not super happy about the way things were going. We saw a, a, a pass late on a a little quick out that uh, the receiver wasn't ready for on a fourth down. And I think that these things add up for Aaron Rodgers, and that's why he's angry. Also, Devontae Adams balling out is also a concern because he is not there. Uh, so I I'm with you. I think there are concerns on some level. I'm not going to overact after one game. We've seen Aaron Rodgers uh, turn it on uh, at the flip of a switch. But it ain't a good showing, and, and there are questions for sure, especially uh, not only the offense side of the ball, but the defense. The defense struggled at times to slow up J.J. and, and, and my guy, Kirk Cousins. Yeah, well, your guy, Kirk Cousins, looks like it's going to be a much more prolific year offensively, at least through 60 minutes of football. And if you heard some mumbling there in the background, that was BMAC uh, realizing that his starting quarterback got him a total of Three, Three points. fantasy points yeah, here, uh, yeah. standard scoring, depending <laughs> on how you stack them up. Yeah. But that is a conversation for another day. We will have Jamie Eisenberg here throughout the hour to give us our fantasy breakdown. Uh, let's talk about Justin Jefferson, BMAC, Ooh. because, I mean, we talked about it in terms of premier pass catchers here on Sunday still getting theirs. Kevin O'Connell did it all year last year with Cooper Cup and scheming him open through double teams when you knew – that defenses were going to be keying on him. We know defenses are going to be keying on Justin Jefferson and still almost 200 yards through the air on Sunday. He has a unique way of running routes. Anytime he has space in between him and his defender, you start seeing him shimmy, like crossing over on the basketball court. But mm -hmm. he's doing it without slowing down. As a defender, you got to pick a side and hope that you guess the right side. And usually you're guessing the wrong side because of his unorthodox way of running routes. Mm -hmm. And then when you put him in a scheme that can allow him to move everywhere on the football field, it's hard. Zone concepts, he's eating them up. He loves them. And that's what we saw today, a lot of zone concepts where he's working in the slot as the number two guy, the number three guy, and he's just finding the open space. This is going to be 
a deadly, deadly offense. As we continue to get in the thick of things in this season with Justin Jefferson doing what he's been doing, man, this man, you had, he had 150 at halftime. Yeah. He took his cleats off in the second <laughs> half and finished with 184, two tubs, 11 targets, only 11 targets. Yeah. He caught nine and almost had 200 yards in the, in the air yeah. receiving. He is the best wide receiver in the game right now. There is a case to no be made. No argument. And he is making that case uh, week in and week out, and especially here in week one. Put Ryan Wilson. <laughs> Ryan Wilson, he wants the T-shirts. I want you to talk about this play caller and Kevin O'Connell because sometimes we see play callers that take over the head coaching mantle, and sometimes that play calling suffers. That was not the case here through one week uh, at the helm of the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, I just talked about how the evolution of the wide receiver has taken place over the last decade or so. Uh, so is the evolution of the young offensive coordinator, and it feels like more times than not, uh, sorry uh, Bears fans who had Nagy for a while there, that these offensive coordinators are hitting early as play callers. Kevin Stefanski had early success coming from the, the Viking system. He's been up and down since, but that may have more to do with, with the off-field stuff than anything else. And we saw it in this week one performance by O'Connell, uh, who is a young former quarterback and was just dialing up plays. I was laughing when I said Kirk Cousins is my guy because I've given him a hard time in the past. He looked pretty good. Not like a guy who had in, in recent history uh, made mistakes down the stretch across his team football, uh, football game. So I think this is a great start, is a complete 180 from what this team had in Mike Zimmer, who is an old-school defensive guy who liked to run the football and, and in many ways <laughs> rub people the wrong way, who he needed to do things for him. O'Connell feels like a, a breath of fresh air at least during week one. We'll see how long the honeymoon phase lasts. But, I mean, Kirk Cousins looked as sharp as he's looked in quite some time. As BMAC noted, it helps having Justin Jefferson out there do the things he did. And I'll just say this quickly. I remember talking to Justin Jefferson at the Combine. He played primarily in the slot his last year at LSU. And I said to him, teams are going to ask, can you play outside? He said, I can play outside. It's not a concern. And he's more than assuaged those concerns with what he's been able to do so, or, so far in his NFL career. It is an early statement out of the Vikings as Aaron Rodgers suffers a loss after the loss of his wide receiver. We will see coming up next if Patrick Mahomes would suffer that same oh, fate in the absence of his top wideout. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.